Welcome to EHBC Kids Sunday Night Online. My name is Miss Elise and I am really, really excited that you're here tonight. We're going to continue our studying called Jesus Knows in the book of Mark. I have a lesson for our preschoolers that I'm calling Cleanliness is Not Godliness. And Pastor Joe has a really cool lesson for our school-aged friends. Um, oh yes, and keep a, a lookout for a really fun trivia game somewhere in there too. So, Oh, oh gosh, don't let me forget. Before we do anything, we need to go over our memory verse, right? Are you ready? Let's all do it together. Three, two, one. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Mark 12, 30. Awesome. You are getting so good at this, my friends. So check out my new mug. I got it for Valentine's Day and I really like it. It's nice and big. It's got cute little gnomes on the outside. I'm kind of partial to cute little gnomes and a really funny saying on it. It says, gnome buddy but you. It's my, my new favorite gnome. <laughs> my new favorite gnome. Also my new favorite mug. And I'm gonna take really good care of it so that I can have it for a long time. In fact, I was thinking <clears throat> I'm a little thirsty so I'm gonna fill it with water right now. So that just in case I start tripping over my tongue, I'll have it if I need it. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in here. Mmm, that looks really nice and cold just the way I like it. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, oh, oh gosh. This is really gross looking. Can you guys see it? Look all the, ins look all the inside, it's all full of mud and oh, ew, oh, yuck. I can't drink that, can I? Guys, I was so busy looking at the outside of my really awesome new mug, I forgot to look inside and make sure that it, oh, this is really gross, and make sure that it was clean. I'm gonna have to wash that. I can't, I can't drink that like that. I have to wash it clean on the inside before I can drink my water. I guess I should have been paying more attention to what was on the inside of that, huh? You know what? Actually, that mistake, reminds me of tonight's lesson. The Pharisees had come to see Jesus and were getting upset by how his disciples seemed to be breaking all of their rules that they had made a long, long time ago and had added on and added on and added on to. But do you remember from the last couple of weeks ago how Jesus has magic eyes and can see what's in our hearts? Jesus knew that those Pharisees were not being honest and that he was just kind of trying to find fault with his disciples. But let's read from the Bible and see what it says happened, okay? Uh, we're going to be reading, I put it behind me today, we're going to be reading in Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 13. Do you guys remember what the Bible is? Yeah? Do you remember? It's God's Word to us, isn't it? That's right. So if it's God's Word, then we know that we can trust it because what it says comes from God. And so it's true, right? Good job remembering that, my friends. Okay, I've already marked my, bi my Bible. Here's what it says in verse one. One day, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Ancient means really, really old. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but just one of many, many traditions that they clung to, like having their ceremonial washing of cups and pitchers and kettles. They were kind of pro-COVID before COVID was even a thing, right? Okay, so in verse five, that was just a little, my thoughts. But in verse five, it goes on to say, so the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, why don't your follower, why don't your disciples follow our age old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand washing ceremony. And Jesus replied, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, which farce means pretend. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. 
for you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Then he said, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. For instance, <clears throat> and this is a big one, guys. Moses gave you this law from God. Honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it is all right for people to say to their parents, I'm sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to God what I would have given you. In this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. And so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. And this is only one example among many others. Wow, friends, Jesus was not fooled by those Pharisees, was he? Nope. He knew, he knew that they were being extra hard to find faults in how he and his disciples were behaving. But Jesus also knew that while the Pharisees were right to wash their hands, they were forgetting to make sure that what was in their hearts was pure and right. So I'm going to continue with verse 14 and 16. It says, Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. Remember, my friends, Jesus could see both their actions and what was in their hearts. And it was their heart attitudes, their inside, that needed to be washed clean, even more than their hands. A few weeks ago, we learned about a paralyzed man and his friends. Jesus forgave the man's sins and healed his soul before he healed his body, right? Jesus cares more about what's clean in our hearts and our souls than what's clean about our hands. You know, traditions can be fun. They can be, you know, fun like singing Christmas carols, or they can be a special way of remembering something important, like on Easter when we have a sunrise service. Or they can even keep us safe, like washing our hands before we eat. But they are not the reason for our worship. God is. That's why it's important to understand what's in the Bible, what His Word tells us about worshiping Him, what His Word tells us about Jesus, about how much Jesus loves us and how to be in a right relationship with him. My friends, my prayer for you is that you learn more every day about God from his word and that someday when you're ready, you ask Jesus to be the boss of your life and to follow him just like the disciples did. My prayer is that you allow him to wash your heart and soul clean because that is much more important anything else, either in the world around you or in your physical body. Let's take a moment and pray together, my friends, okay? Let's fold our hands, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, thank you uh, for your word. Thank you for your word telling us about your love for us, telling about Jesus' love for us. Help us to learn every day from it and help us to follow you better every day by learning from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great job, guys. Kiss those brains for listening so well. Okay. Whew, that was a good, that was a good lesson. <sighs> I got a little emotional. But up next, we have our trivia game, and then Pastor Joe is, is going to be on with our big kid lesson. I'm going to see you all next week. But until then, remember, I love you, and I'm always praying for you. Have a great week, my friends. Bye. Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time, we'll be asking questions about Jesus feeding 5,000 people. The first question for 100 points. What food did a young boy have with him? Was it A, seven grapes? B, two melons and two fish? C, two fish and five barley loaves? Or D, or D, five barley loaves and a fig. The answer is C. The young boy had two fish and five barley loaves. The next question for 200 points. How many people gathered to hear Jesus teach? 
Was it A, 500 men plus women and children? Was it B, 5,000 men plus women and children? C, 1,000 men plus women and children? Or D, 2,000 men plus women and children? The answer is B, 5,000 men plus women and children gathered to hear Jesus teach. The next question for 1 million points. What is another name for the Sea of Galilee? Is it A, Lake Tiberias, B, the Dead Sea, C, the Mediterranean Sea, or D, the waters of Merom? The answer is A. Another name for the Sea of Galilee is Lake Tiberias. The next question for a bunch of points. In which place were Jesus and his disciples when he fed the people? Was it A, on the beach? B, on a hill near Lake Galilee? C, in a forest near Lake Galilee? Or D, on a boat in the Sea of Galilee? The answer is B. Jesus and his disciples were on a hill near Lake Galilee when he fed the people. The next question for four points. Why did Jesus ask Philip, where shall we buy bread for the people to eat? Was it A, to test him? B, he needed to buy bread to feed the people? C, he was hungry? Or D, he wanted Peter to buy bread for everyone? The answer is A. Jesus asked Philip, where shall we buy bread for the people to eat, to test him? The next question for a gajillion points. What did Jesus do when he held the loaves of bread? A. He blessed it. B. He sold it. C. He ate it. Or D. He dropped it. The answer is A. Jesus blessed the loaves of bread when he held them. The next question for a few points. After the people had eaten, how many baskets of food were filled with leftovers? Was it A, 8, B, 10, C, 11, or D, 12? The answer is D. After the people had eaten, there were 12 baskets of food filled with leftovers. The next question for 500 points. Which feast was about to begin? Was it A, Passover? B, the Feast of First Fruits? C, the Feast of Trumpets? Or D, the Feast of Unleavened Bread? The answer is D. The Feast of Unleavened Bread was about to begin. The next question for so many points. In which region did this event take place? Was it A. Galilee, B. Gozan, C. Israel, or D. Zebulon? The answer is A. This event took place in the region of Galilee. And the last question for double your current points. Where did Jesus go after he had fed the crowd? A. He sailed away on a boat. B. To pray on a mountain by himself. C. To meet with his 12 disciples. Or D. 
he continued to talk with the large crowd of people. The answer is B. After he had fed the crowd, Jesus went to pray on a mountain by himself. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. Good evening and welcome to Sunday Night Online, you guys. I'm Pastor Joe Vivian, and tonight we continue our journey through the book of Mark called Jesus Knows. I just want to say thank you to Miss Elise and that great study, that great object lesson, and I'm not even drinking that water. You know, that's just one of those things that every now and then I enjoy a cool glass of water. I'm definitely going to look what's on the inside first. Great lesson, you guys, and that really is. In fact, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to take time to highlight during this study Jesus' ministry here on earth, emphasizing his message again, like I've said before, sa service, sacrifice, and love. Service, sacrifice, and love, you guys. We're going to have a great time together during this study. Tonight's study for our older kids is titled Matters of the Heart. Huh, kind of goes with what Miss Elise is talking about, too. It's all about the heart issues, on what's on the inside. So it's going to be great. We're going to learn tonight that Jesus taught us that God's word is the ultimate authority for our lives and that his word will transform our hearts, our souls. We're going to be in Mark chapter 7 tonight, verses 1 through 13. Same as before, you guys. So if you have your Bibles, make sure you mark your Bibles at Mark chapter 7. Okay, mark your Bibles at Mark. Again, let's try this. It's If I go halfway in my Bible... Uh, I'm in the Psalms, and then if I take this side and I go halfway again, I'm right in the New Testament. Look where it opened up for me, right on the New Testament. So then it goes Matthew, Mark. It's the next book. So I go Matthew, and then I go Mark, and of course, I've already got it marked. Uh, but Mark chapter 7, you guys. So go ahead, mark your Bibles, be prepared, you guys. That's where we're going to be, okay? So now we need to, just as what Miss Elise did, and it's always a reminder, you guys, we need to take time to go over the series key verse, okay, the key verse. And that's Mark 10.45, Mark 10.45. So here we go. There you go. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Again, guys, for even the Son of Man, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. While you guys are looking at this verse, I want to ask you guys, this, okay? Have you taken time to stop and serve another person in the last two, three weeks that we've been talking about? Have you displayed the same love Jesus shares with others? Think about that, you guys. Think about that. Have you displayed that same love by serving one another? It's a great question, huh? Hopefully you guys have. So let's get started, you guys. I'm going to open up my Bibles. We're going to be in Mark chapter 7, okay? And again, I used my green and yellow markers, so we're right there. And we're going to start in verse 1. So I need you guys to follow along with me. Again, I'm in the New Living Translation, just so that you guys are all aware of that. And that's what I'm reading out. All translations, you know, there's different translations out there. I'll be reminding you what verse I'm starting so that you guys can follow along. But it's important that you guys have your Bibles out and you're following along with me. Okay, so here we go, you guys. It says, starting Mark chapter 7, verse 1. One day some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand-washing before eating. Verse 3, the Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Verse 5, so the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, Why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. And Jesus replied, You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Verse 7. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Then he said, you skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own traditions. Verse 10. For instance, Moses gave you this law from God, honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. <laughs> Verse 11. But you say it, all right, it is all right for people to say 
to their parents, Sorry, I can't help you, for I vow to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. And verse 13. And so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own traditions. And this is only one example among many others. Wow. Guys, we're going to get started on this. We're going to get started on this entire teaching. I want us to first and foremost look at, while you have your Bibles open, look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. It says, they noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. So they noticed that. I want you to understand, the Pharisees noticed that the disciples were eating with unwashed hands. <laughs> Guys, they find fault in the situation. They're finding fault in the situation. Think on this. Think on this, you guys. Some people take pride in what they do, what they accomplish and achieve, grades, awards, medals. They take pride in that. But you know what? There's others out there that will take pride in finding fault in what other people do wrong. They are fault finders is what I want to call them. Sad truth is that some Christians make this a competition sport. They do. They go to church so that they can keep track of how many faults they can find in others. That's sad. They're fault finders. Let's look back at chapter 7 as you guys have this. Okay, I'm going to put my Bible down. I shouldn't have. I apologize. So back in there on chapter 7, you guys. So back in here, we see that, that these fault finders focus on the cleaning of hands. Now, remember, though, hygiene is very important, you guys, especially super important to wash your hands right now. Hey, get this. This is before COVID. Now, I want you to understand something. This, this study, a British study before COVID, showed that if everyone in the world routinely washed their hands regularly every day, over one million lives would be saved. Wow, and that was before COVID. Just wash your hands, people. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's important. And now with COVID, is even more important. So again, let me stress to you, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Okay, but in the Old Testament, God gave commands to the Jews about good hygiene practices. This was 3,000 years before science proved it to be right. Yep, God gave perfect instructions, including wash your hands. However, the teachers of the law added to the law. Proper hand washing, you guys. I want you to understand something. Proper hand washing back then, for the Jews, became a 65 pages of instruction. How to wash your hands was 65 pages. 65 pages, how to wash your hands. I don't think I could come up with one page as to how to wash your hands, let alone 65. So you have to understand, you guys, so when the Pharisees said that the disciples didn't wash their hands, what they're really saying, you guys, is that they are not washing their hands our way. That's what they're saying. They're saying these disciples are not washing their hands the way we told them to wash it. All 65 pages. They missed page 62. I don't know. But that's the way they felt, you guys. Now let's look at something right here real quick, you guys. I want to read to you again. We're in Mark 7 still, but look at verses 5 and 6. It says, so the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony. And Jesus replied, you hypocrites, hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. But you guys, Jesus hits hard and hits home. You honor God, but it's only lip service. Nothing but empty words. Your hearts are far away. Kids, understand something, what I'm saying right now, it's a matter of the heart. Let's not miss what God just said. He just told the most religious people of that time that their hearts were far from him. Let's look at Mark chapter 7 now. Let's continue in verses 7 and 8. It says, Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. So let's ask ourselves, you guys. Let's ask ourselves this. How do we know that their hearts are far from God? How do we know that? You know Why? Let's look at it. Because they paid more attention to man's word, think the 65 pages, okay, on hand washing, than to God's word. They lost the point. Little stuff became big, and big stuff kind of got lost. Jesus, Jesus shares this example. He reminds them of God's command in verse 10. He tells them to honor your parents. But then Jesus reminds them something the teachers call the korban. And I'm going to teach you guys that. It's korban. It's in verse 11. Okay, 
Corban was a loophole. Okay? Back in those times when parents got older, grown children had a responsibility to care for them. So that meant using your own food, your own shelter, your own money to take care of your parents. However, Corban was this. If you dedicated all your stuff to God and your parents needed help, well, you could tell them, well, sorry, Mom and Dad. Wish I could help, but I've dedicated it all to God. You are on your own. Corban. It was a lousy loophole. But it was used. That the religious leaders used to nullify God's word. In verse 13, Jesus reminds them that they did lots of this stuff. See, understand this, kids. If your interpretation of God's word, okay, if your interpretation of God's word makes you disrespect your parents, well, then you've missed the point. It reflects your true heart. If it makes you uncaring, ungiving, ungodly to anyone, you've missed it. Listen carefully, you guys. The Bible is our ultimate authority. Not the culture, not the people around us, not the traditions of families and friends. The Bible, God's word, is our ultimate authority. We can't forget God's word already has a message for each of us, okay? We can't forget that. In fact, you guys, I want to, to drive home these, these words, this statement. With God's word, as you read it, find it, read it, apply it. Just that way, you guys. Find it, read it, apply it into your life. Every chapter, every story, every book. Find it, read it, and apply it. See, this is exactly what Jesus does right here in the first 13 verses. There's a lot of instructions in the Old Testament about clean and unclean. Jesus gets to the heart of them all in the next two verses. Mark 7, 14 through 15. Let's read that, you guys. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart just like the cup illustration of Miss Elise. See, the Old Testament laws on clean and unclean are focused on hygiene and diet. That's good, you guys. However, it's not the main point. See, they are meant to be a picture of the inside. Clean hands are good. Clean hearts are much better. Matthew 5.8 says, God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. That's so important. Uh, let, me, let me land the lesson now, tonight, right now. Okay? Dirt. <laughs> dirt, you can take in, the dirt that you take in, the dirt that you swallow, it can't affect you. It can make you sick. However, it's not who you are, huh? It's the dirt that comes out of your heart. Your words, your thoughts, your actions. That is who you are. That is your character. Kids, your eyes and ears are windows to your heart. Do you know that? Be careful what you let in. Seek out God's word first in every decision, everything you do. Make his truth a priority for your heart. Remember what we learned tonight. It's a matter of the heart. We don't want to miss the point like the Pharisees did. Kids, where are you? Where is your heart? You have to understand something. So often we forget, but by ourselves, we can't clean that heart of its dirt, its anger, its fear. Nah, -uh, we can't. Only God can. In fact, God offers you a new heart that he himself will clean. And in fact, let me throw up this scripture and share this with you guys. This comes out of Ezekiel chapter 36. It says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. Verse 26, and I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey, obey my regulations. Kids, this is what Jesus offers us, a new heart. Not like the old one, but a new heart. To be in Christ, we are a new creation. Did you guys know that? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And if the new creation gets some dirt in it, guess what, guys? Then Jesus will wash us clean. Through his word, the word of God. His word, his truth, 
It's like soap for your soul, people. So here's the, the big question. So what do you choose tonight? Choose Jesus, kids. Choose a new heart. Choose his word, God's word, God's truth to keep that heart clean. Choose Jesus. Can we pray, guys? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Father God, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for this beautiful lesson because so often we get so concerned about what's on the outside instead of about what's on the inside. We spent many times speaking through this lesson already in Mark that it is a matter of the heart. Lord God, you are more concerned about our soul than you are about what's on the outside. It is important that we have good hygiene, that we take care of ourselves and we keep ourselves healthy, but Lord God, where's the condition of our heart? So Lord God, right now, for any individual out there, any young man or woman listening that has not surrendered their life, turned their life over to you, have made you the boss of their life, the Lord of their life, their Savior, their Rescuer, Lord God, I pray that it is tonight that they stop and say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, I've got dirt in my heart, and I need to be clean, and only you can wash it. And I choose that tonight. I choose you from this point forward to clean my heart so I can walk with you. Lord, let that be tonight for someone. And Lord God, also for those of us that have been walking and we have a relationship with the Lord and we've got some dirt in there because we've been sarcastic, we've been mean, we've had a bad attitude, our words, actions, and thoughts do not line up with you, Lord, I ask that you wash that away as well. That we stay focused on your word, not what the world teaches us, but what your word teaches us. Lord God, I lift this all up to you. I thank you and praise you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, you guys. Amen. Great lesson tonight. Great lesson. Don't forget. Don't forget, you guys. Next week, join us as we continue our study in the book of Mark. Jesus knows. So join us next Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Mount Standard Time for Sunday Night Online, Jesus Knows. Kids, I always say this, but I can't say it enough. Remember, you are being prayed for and loved. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not a mistake. You are exactly how God intended you to be. We gather each week to know Jesus, live like Jesus, and make Jesus known. Know Jesus, live like Jesus, and make Jesus known. Till next Sunday night, you guys. I love you guys. Have a blessed week. Good night.